I am also using your stream as a way to now uh, break news. No, absolutely not. You if I know what's like, hold on. on Twitch. Hold, hold Jesus Christ. I am giving advice to other big streamers right now. I am telling them to break the rules. Because I don't know how I, XQC, th these two, I do not understand why. Do you want me to, do you want me to give you a, a, a hint maybe? I hate to say this publicly. I hate every time I do it. People hate you. That's fine. Tons of people hate you. Cyberbullying people on the internet is really effective and generally, Steven, why do you tweet some things? Ask me what it is. Saying that Reginald from many sources was just a straight up douchebag to a lot of people. Yelled at people, screamed at people, yelled profanities at players and staff after losses. And there was like video of like him talking shit to Double Lift for- Was it anything like really egregious? Like any like har sexual harassment like type stuff or whatever? We're talking about the DMCA stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think I've actually commented on it that much, but I mean, like, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I'm really bad at open-ended questions. Be more specific. <laughs> what are you asking me? That's all good. I am also using your stream as a way to now uh, break news. Oh, wow. Because I'm not tweeting, and I, I've, like, I've missed out on all these fucking news. I was going to, like, break that what what mm -hmm. was going to YouTube, and the loop was going to YouTube, and I was actually really sad and kind of pissed off at myself that I was on this little... Hiatus. thing here so i've been able to do anything okay um so if well, i go on you now if i say through your stream then it can get posted and then <laughs> that at least like gives me a little bit of dopamine okay not gotcha. as much as it were to like link back to my tweet or my own stream which i don't do in general anyway okay all right um, well we hit us up what do you got toast is not banned for a month you're all moron so when i say you i mean you in the general sense you as the je definitely i mean definitely you people in chat you guys are incredibly stupid mm -hmm. uh, both chats on because you're free on both both platforms down. both chats about uh he means twitch and youtube but not dgg so not ahead. dgg no um you guys you guys are <laughs> way smarter than the two exactly. normie chats thank you okay you guys are really smart definitely not you moron um you as in all of these other streamers out there and everybody in this fucking industry i don't know if it's in particular you steven that's why i wanted to ask you what you had um said already i don't think you um, did and yeah what about, about your friend group it wouldn't have surprised me if you would have gotten banned for a month but i mean all of that is at twitch's discretion so i mean i don't know no no it's not it's also partially why everyone's a fucking idiot and when i say you also this includes the media mm -hmm. who if you like google disguised host now there's like 15 articles about him getting banned mm -hmm. and in almost all of them they basically take his tweet word for word and say that he is likely banned for a month one he didn't tweet that he was banned for a month all he said was that I will see you in a month, knowing that it is a bait tweet in mm -hmm. general. Of course, it implies how long he's banned for, but I can confirm it is two fucking days. Oh, it is like the same month. thing oh. as Pokey, okay? It is not a month, you absolute idiots. Okay. Um, this guy's toast is banned for two days. Uh, I can confirm from someone within Twitch. Okay. And then who knows, maybe if you just asked Toast, all of you people in the media out there, how long he was banned for, you would get a different answer. Okay. Uh, and this is because the DMCA, the way the system works within Twitch, is that if it is your first time um, getting striked, it is only two to three days for everyone. That's why Pokey had a really short one, too. Okay, I will say that that's been inconsistent with things in the past, because in the past, generally, I think a DMCA strike at least a live one meant you were only suspended for 24 hours. So I don't know if they have, but they're always reworking their internal policies on how they deal with this. But Yeah, from what I understand for now, it is two days. Okay. Maybe it is two to three days, but I think Pokey had two. She, she just started streaming like an hour ago, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's two days. Okay. I, I don't really know. Um, so that was just the news I want to let everyone know. Please stop. There's like, there's like the, the front page of LSF now is like 30,000 upvotes mm -hmm. of Toast is banned for 30 days. No, it's not what happened. You guys are just so easily manipulated because you're fucking had baby brains, which is why you watch Destiny all day. You I mean, it's pl I mean, it's plausible that he would have gotten a 30 day ban. I don't think well, that that's like so out of character. Of course it's plausible. Yeah. No, but you know what? That mentality ties into why this is happening in general. It's what? because if you're a streamer, like, and I was I was having an argument with uh, your good friend DJ Wheat 
Oh, God. Um, uh, <laughs> your good friend. And my actually really good friend. Chat, be fucking nice to DJ Weed, okay? You He's have no actually... obligation to be nice to that fucking no, piece of be... shit. Shut the fuck up, What Steven. a fucking he... loser, dude. No, you two should make up. When that guy, um, first of all, I no, tried to make no, up. Hold on, you, stop. Hold on. Hey, 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 no, no, hey. This is like the one thing, okay? You were at that. I think you were literally at that dinner when I walked over to him and talked to him and tried to make up, okay? So I actually did it, and I think you saw me do it face to face, okay? And he still has a massive fucking erection for fucking with me as much as possible. Even when serving in an official capacity on Twitch, on their stream, yes, within like the past year, he was literally shit talking me about how I toe the line or cross the line or whatever um, constantly when I'm on this platform. So no, f him and f that guy. I hate okay. that motherfucker. What? No, you two gotta make up. Is he not? Don't stop saying you two like it's an equal thing. He's the little fucking baby that's carrying on from his fucking PJ Jemma fucking rant from ten years ago. How how hard can that be to put? You know, I think I just realized there. actually what we're gonna do. This is the plan, okay? We continue to do nothing and wait, and eventually all of the Korean players are going to be switching over to LOL because Korea is huge <laughs> on that shit now. And then once they switch over, people like uh, Idra and In Control can go back to winning tournaments. I think that's the plan right now. I love you guys Idra. very much. Peace out. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I hate we had to go down that fucking road. What happened? You know what? Did that I was such of? a Fucking pussy ass bitch, cop out. I can't even fucking. Yeah, that's right. I'm wearing fucking pajama pants because I had to stand up for how fucking lame that actually was. How At least go back to winning as a fucking to imagine what lame it was. that shit was. I can't believe it. I, I mean, just you've, can't. You've got oh to admit my that. God, to admit that. like it's like arguing with my fucking like a seven year old. Okay, but it was fine, and then Steve, I can't believe that, Steve. Like, come on, you're fucking better than that. It's gonna be so awkward when the game continues to churn on, and like, yeah, the number, we're not gonna have. Maybe we will never have a 600 million person stream, but it's gonna do great. And then like, Destiny's gonna silently be like, yeah, but it was it was gonna die. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, I think we should just like because like, I didn't try to take his perspective. He was right in everything he said. <sighs> Jesus. All right. So careful, we careful, dude. I you mean, I can feel the neck vein coming on because it's just like I'm gonna fucking laugh at all you goddamn fucking stupid idiots. Well, you, you still don't think fucking he has hates a point me. Where you maybe do toe the line a little bit? No, absolutely not. You if I know what's like, hold on. on Twitch. Hold, hold Jesus Christ, okay? I know you said you're not suicidal, but you're gonna feel it by the time we're done with this conversation if you really wanna go down this route, okay? T Twitch is one of the hardest to understand companies in the world when it comes to the TOS. The fact that there are multiple premium partners that are streaming, obviously, copyright infringing content on the front fucking page of this fucking website for days and days and days at a time should show you how confusing the TOS is on this totally site. Agree. The fact that we just went through two weeks of people not knowing if you could talk about a saltine cracker or not without getting banned should show you that this website is completely fucking inconsistent when it's it comes to which rules. Okay, yeah. So don't give me this like, oh, don't you say you tell line? No, this is my fucking job. If I know what I'm allowed to say or I know what I'm not allowed to say, I'll say it or I won't say it. It's really that easy. It's not a, it's not a fun game for me where I'm all nepotistic with my little fucking friends in my office and I know that I know that I can get banned if I do dumb shit. So if I know where the line is, I won't cross it. But this garbage ass website doesn't give you that information at all. So don't sit here and tell me that it's so obvious and I push it so often. If I know where the line is, I won't cross it. I'm not getting banned on YouTube and everything all the fucking time. It's only on this garbage fucking website. Well, who the fuck knows why you might get banned any given day, depending on who sees your report, depending on what partner manager catches what, that I actually end up in a lot of trouble. So chill. No, but you know I generally agree with everything you just said, and I basically argued the same things about how this platform doesn't know and is inconsistent on all types of dumb shit. I, I actually totally fully agree with you there. I don't think that Wheat is equal to Twitch, though. He's not even going to be part of the company any longer. Thank God. Hey, yeah, but look, hey, maybe things like this are part of the reason why he's not there. You really feel like he is, like, consistent with all the fuck-ups and things that you mentioned I no but when he that. tries to do annoying. messaging it's a fucking joke like he's incompetent as fuck. he tried to run that show these decisions. it doesn't matter if he's making the decisions he was inept at the, at the small role that he tried to fill as a public pr person like the fact that when he tried to do that show and he ran it for like two episodes and then they had to cancel it because he was overwhelmed by the tweets and he couldn't give a single fucking coherent no, answer to any question that he was that, asked that's not true though, though. it absolutely it was, was true. everybody was watched not. him fumble that shit okay maybe it wasn't canceled maybe they only wanted to do two episodes or whatever he was the only part of the reason that only happened was because they didn't have anyone and the twitches had no one to talk about all the dumb shit they do.
so to be a spokesperson for all of the dumb shit that Twitch is doing when you're also not the person responsible for deciding any of the things, the dumb shit they're doing is hard. And I think it was this Twitch, like, again, reacting badly to it. I don't it's, he's a human he being. If you don't want to if you don't want to try to carry that water, then don't. don't yeah, if a company no, we, comes, like the guy's we, a we, multimillionaire. We, he doesn't have to and like go up and be the whipping boy for Twitch. Like, and he still could have responded to it better than the way that he did. For somebody as old as him that's been through as many orgs as he's been through, he should know how to handle these conversations. I know I could handle those conversations publicly and I would have higher expectations for him than I would for me. Sorry, I, I really don't like him. You're giving me a, he's the worst guy in the world for, to no, bring me out to jump like, he, he is a good friend of mine. That's great. I I'm glad you guys are friends. It. That's I really awesome. I think he handled it um, that badly in his perspective. I'm glad you think he's that. had to deal with at Twitch. What oh, he's had to deal saying. with? Oh no, his office job behind the scene. Oh my God, no, I'm sure it's so hard. We were oh. talking about making Twitch like a better company and making better, making it do better things. Mm -hmm. He does have to go up against, you know, the giant of all the stupid shit that goes on there. Wow. In terms of like getting, making like the right decision. It, it's oh unfair to blame him for those. All I was saying is I don't think it's fair in that sense to blame him for this type of shit. I don't blame him for everything that's gone wrong at Twitch. I just don't like that when he was speaking in an official capacity as an ambassador of Twitch to the public, that he took that opportunity to shit talk me. It, it like, it is the most petty, unbelievably stupid shit in the world. When I've tried so hard to like, get my community to chill for the past literally eight fucking years, because I know how fragile his ego is, for him to take an opportunity to do that is just so irritating to me. But it, it, this is like the worst person for us to talk about. But anyway. I know, I know. Well, the one-to-one the -one is personal, whatever, it's fine, it's fine. Well, it, I wish it was personal, but he made it like business related as well. But anyway, so yeah, what would you want to talk about anyway? Aside from uh, our good friend, our mutual friend, Marcus. <laughs> God you... damn, I don't even know what the fucking initial... <laughs> DMCA stuff. Oh yeah, as I was saying, as I was arguing with him, uh -huh. if I am giving advice to other big streamers right now, I am telling them to break the rules. Because of the way, again, as you just mentioned, how fucked up this website and company is, there really aren't any consistent rules. Just chatting is has been the meta for the since the section came out. Mm -hmm. So if you want to continue to ride the just chatting meta, abusing the watch party stuff is easily the 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 best number one option you can. Well, do. hold on, chill for a second. Watch party stuff is totally okay. There's a difference between the watch party feature. Oh, I just mean as a concept. No, oh, not sure, sure, feature, sure, sure. Okay, just yeah. as a concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I will say that. For a smaller streamer, um, I think that it's okay to abuse it. As a larger streamer, I would be more careful. Um, DMCA takedowns are just like Babby's first hand slap for this type of stuff. But a larger copyright holder could absolutely go after you for big infringement, like regardless of anything that like Twitch does in terms of banning or DMCA takedowns. No, but if you're a bigger streamer, then look, there's no bigger streamers than Pokey and or XQC and Hassan. Matter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So they, it, it's been. I would say, from as a third party perspective, it's been good for Pokey. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it'll be good for Toast when he comes back in two days. I don't, sure, I don't but know we, we're looking at it for viewership now. But the scary thing would be is if a large company, a large rights holder, one of these went after like XQC or Pokey. In like an actual like copyright infringement lawsuit, not like a not a yes, bullshit little that takedown. Would be really bad. Yeah, and it would look. It would be. I think it would be hard when you have people that are streaming full seasons of TV shows. Whew, and that's not going to be like a you're banned from Twitch for thirty days. That's going to be like a you're illegally distributing content to however many people, and like you're doing it full, fully knowing that. Like that just seems like it could be a really rough ride. But maybe not. Who knows? You know, nobody's gone after it yet. So. I mean, if you're a big streamer and, and, and you're looking out for yourself in, as an individual, you want to continue to try to find out and innovate whatever the meta on Twitch is, whether it's playing <laughs> to, the Maybe to game. skirt the line, as some people would say, maybe. But that, yeah. that is actually always how it's been on this platform for years. It really is. If you skirt the line and you kind of do it the right way, your suspensions in a way are a way of like promoting you and marketing you less than like it's stopping you from whatever you were supposed to be doing. I mean, obviously really horrendous shit should be, per you don't come back from permanent bans and you know, other, other fucked up things, but generally like light suspensions for like a DMCA type of thing, or like the titty, the, the, the whole hot tub streamers and sexualization of the industry or the gambling or what were the few things before that? Yeah, whatever though. Yeah, it's, it's usually, you can keep doing those.
because it's really successful and profitable. And then if you do get suspended, it's not that long. And then you get to yell at Twitch all day and have your have everybody else yell at Twitch or the industry because you were banned unfairly. And then you come and then you get a bunch of news articles and you come back. Sure. Um, and that seems to be good. However, if you're looking at it from you for the entire industry, obviously this is fucking bad because the more attention that, you know, streaming copyrighted content gets with like the media and it becomes like, you know, the, the discourse for the day or two and Twitch gets swept up. Yeah. Then a big studio could come in and really start hammering down on people. And that's when um, I think it would you know really change things mm -hmm. however i think up until then no one's gonna do that i think people will continue to watch stuff especially if it's on youtube anything that's on youtube i feel like it's fair game yeah because um, if in YouTube terms of like weighing it, a risk maybe yeah like but i mean I've, legally it's not fair game but like yeah no of course no of course but not. I know what however you nim it, had on, a uh, nim had like a theory or whatever he's like if they don't care enough to go after it on youtube they probably don't care enough to go after it on twitch which is probably true so yeah yeah i think actually the same way so mm -hmm. if you're live streaming uh, you you things that are already on youtube then you, the likelihood is probably pretty low it's when you venture off of youtube that definitely the likelihood goes higher and the more recent and or mainstream the show is I think people have been trying to keep it safe with like old master chefs, which has always been, you know, initially the meta. Fucking train wrecks is also right. All a bunch of people now basically doing what he did and he got DMCA too. Yeah. I uh, I don't know if I was the first one, but um one of the scariest moments of my life was I actually got a DMCA and it was a two week ban, but it was like six or seven years ago. Um, it was the first time I'd ever been two week banned from Twitch. I didn't even think it was possible for me to get banned from this website because Twitch didn't ban for anything back then. And I think it might have been the first ban I ever got, or it was the first one for that long. Um, it was in 2015 and it was for watching To Catch a Predator. <laughs> <laughs> that was super scary. Dude, back Chris Hansen would love the promotion now. Yeah. Uh, and then I remember, um, true, yeah, that guy needs it. And then I remember, um, I, I think I, I really do. I think I might have been the first one to get banned for DMC related shit on the site. I, I don't, I, um, I don't know anybody else that got banned first for. Steven, you've always been ahead of the, the meta. First, okay? Yeah, when it comes to getting banned, yep, the F you word, the right fucking. The, the only board. reason they're banned it for the DMCA shit is because I said the other day, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna start doing this shit. I bet I'll be the first one to get banned for it. But they pulled the trigger a little bit too early. I said that 30 minutes before uh, Pokemon got banned, actually. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I don't know. This it's a uh, it's a crazy world, and I'm not sure how Mizkip hasn't been banned yet. That one, oh yeah, he shut his stream and everything down like immediately. He, yeah, and I'm I don't know how XQC these two. I do not understand why. Do you want me to do you want me to give you a, a, a hint? Maybe I hate to say this publicly. I hate every time I do it. Um, are you familiar with how like a DMC takedown works? I mean, yeah, you could do fake DMC. Yeah, down, it's but, probably just a matter of like hate watchers. It's whoever hated who more. Somebody probably just saw the Pokemon shit and then they just have to, you just file a DMC and he's like, hey, I'm the rights holder of this, take it down. Um, Twitch doesn't verify who the request is coming from. They don't have an obligation to and they probably shouldn't. Um, but they, um, they they just have to follow the request and then that's how it goes, yeah. And then it's From what I understand though, Pokies and Toast were both real. Okay, so, maybe, yeah. I mean, Hassan's was apparently fake, right? Yeah, Hassan's was mm -hmm. fake, but, you know, as unlike every other, uh, apparently, a port reporter out there, I checked and mm -hmm. they are real. Pokies I had, um, real. you can also notify the rights holder as well. Um, because so like, I, it's cause I have cringe fucking losers in my chat. Somebody in my chat said that he was the one that, um, emailed, he had the emails to Vex or something. Um, uh, apparently emailed the company to, to get Toast <laughs> fucking banned. Um, I ended up banning that guy from my chat. Uh, somebody in the chat might have the screenshots well, for it. Well, what could happen is hate watchers could email the production companies yeah. and then tell them this is happening. Yep. I mean, that that also is a thing. Yeah, yeah that's so, what he, and I've had people email me before where some guy in my Twitch chat, I was watching a red letter media review, I think of the Star Wars movies. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. And um, some guy in my no, chat- What? No, first time. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, some guy in my chat was like, why are you watching this on stream? You're not allowed to do that. This was like five years ago again. It was a long time ago. And I was like, oh, well, it's because I own that company. I can watch whatever I want from it. I was joking, obviously, but I was like, Gitter. and he took that clip and he sent it to that company. And then <laughs> their, um, 
lawyer or whatever emailed me and he was like, we're not sure who you are, but you're misrepresenting your license to this, blah, blah, blah. If you don't stop immediately, it was like, okay, Jesus. Uh, yeah, so I mean, like, hate watchers have some power too there in terms of notifying rights holders. I hate to say that probably because it empowers haters, but yeah. I mean, you don't think people hate XQC and Mizkif though? Don't they have their own group of yeah, but it, each of them? They do, but it just comes down to that person, that one person that's desperate enough to pull the trigger. Like, everybody has haters, but how many people have haters that are, you know, going to murder them in real life, you know? They're they're there. They're I would just... say out of Toast, XQC, Pokey, and Mizkif, if Toast is the least hated person. Um, probably, yeah. So that if he gets dinged, and XQC and Mizkif aren't, I I think it's just pure luck. Maybe it's the specific shows. I'm not sure if Mizkif is watching mm -hmm. a different show than... Yeah, maybe. Or it might even be who's like responsive to emails. Maybe hate watchers have emailed all the other companies, but these the ones that Toast was watching from were the ones <laughs> that actually pay attention to their inbox for, for this shit, maybe. Yeah, that is possible. I just have to imagine it's going to continue on, especially anime. I think anime is really, really risky. I would not recommend watching big animes unless it's really old school. And I feel like even then it's still not a good idea. But I feel like that one is probably them and full length movies are definitely mm -hmm. the, the two big, biggest risks right now. Mm -hmm. And then if that arrow comes in, I could, I could actually see Twitch changing the way that they um, incur penalties as a streamer. If they know, they can obviously see what we've been talking about, is that you generally benefit, if you're a big streamer, you kind of almost benefit from abusing the meta, seeing how long you can get away from it, getting suspended for two days, coming back, getting all the attention, and then getting more viewers when you get back. Mm -hmm. um, what if they did things like demonetize you for X amount of time instead of suspending you? Mm -hmm. I am afraid that would happen. And that would seem to be way worse if you're a streamer um, than a ban. Yeah, potentially, yeah. I mean, do, do you, you would think so, right? I, it depends on the revenue streams of some of these people, right? For somebody like Pokemon, it might not matter because she makes the lion's share of her money on sponsorships and stuff. If you're more reliant on like, subs and everything, then maybe you don't care as much. Or if you're more reliant on subs, then you probably would care more. Um, I would but, say that's most people, though. Generally, yeah. Most but people are right. The actually. people this is affecting the most are the people at the very top who are a little bit atypical when it comes to... But yeah, I mean, it would be a bigger penalty than just getting banned, for sure. And I'm afraid that's what will happen. The, the ad apocalypse on Twitch won't be the same as on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I can see these types of these types of things that maybe Twitch would do, which would definitely be worse for the streamers. So this is what people have to be careful of. If you're an individual, then yeah, keep fucking watching shit because... Fuck it at this point. Now and it's become like a news story. Now it's the discourse. Now it's like baiting Twitch. Are you going to do something? You can do something. Mm -hmm. um, and you can keep... I think that's why it's funny for XQC and Mizkif especially to keep streaming. Like, whatever. Um, but it is definitely probably bad for the industry in the end. Yeah. And anyone compares it to video games is a fucking delusional or a moron. I'm not sure which is. Yeah, that, like, the comparison was maybe valid, like, eight years ago when streaming was a little bit more fledgling when it came to video games and everything. But these days, like, a lot of companies have, like, literally explicitly given permission for it to be streamed. Like, I think Riot even has a, um, I think a part on their website that even talks about, like, oh, yeah, we love it when people stream our games or whatever. Um... People that were trying to make, I say people, Hassan was the one that I saw push that the most, trying to say, oh, it's the same thing as streaming video games, you're dumb as fuck, like, yeah. Yeah, that is extremely stupid. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this entire website was built off of this concept. No, it is not going to be removed anytime soon. And it, again, it should be obvious, you cannot watch full-time fucking movies or TV shit. Like, this seems to be... Somehow, the Twitch community has made DMCA favorable. Mm -hmm. Which is really pathetic. Wait, it's somehow so the easy. wait, say that again. Sorry. It's so easy to win the internet culture war against DMCA because it is really such an old, absurd system, which is usually like you're a YouTuber and you play a song for five seconds during your fucking video, and some random ass channel will like try to claim your entire video. And that's what like a lot of people are always complaining about DMCA mm -hmm. and having a really good argument for why it should be going away. Now you have Twitch streamers watching full length movies, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? You make like DMCA look good mm -hmm. in this way. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It's yeah, I, I, yeah, it is what it is. I, I don't know when it where it's supposed to stop or when it ends. Anyway, when's React content, Stephen? Why are you playing fucking Rust? What are you doing? I don't know. 
What do you think? Um, do you think any big companies are going to move Your on this, or do you would, think they just don't care? Would love to have React content. I mean, you kind of do that anyway, but instead of I just feel like in, political shit. I don't like watching fucking TV shows and shit. All right, fuck that. No, shit. politics sucks. You should just be mindless and sit back and watch a show. Master Chef season. It's 15. so much easier. Anything, anything. You to do the least amount of work. You just put on other people's videos and you sit there and talk about them. Based. And you make the most amount of money this way. You do. What's the point of even playing games anymore? True. So Twitch won't pay the money that they used to. Now Twitch is almost underpaying and they're fucking over people. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't want to pay for Lupo and they didn't want to pay for Ludwig. Um, and YouTube is also offering the big bucks because mm -hmm. they're willing to, to pay more to try to get the platform going. So again, people getting the bag. True. It's all good, and that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Streamers should continue to get the bag, and first that was Mixer, and now it's YouTube, and probably Facebook. But even Facebook is, people understand it's such a bad fucking idea, even with the amount of money. I mean, Toast shows that, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he got paid a lot. But now that it's over, there's no reason to, like, re-sign again or something. Wonder what did you ever know? What was his concurrent viewership hole. on that platform? Do you have any idea? No, that's one of the. I can't. I can't find anything. Okay. No API for Facebook. The, the thing barely fucking works. Like the view counter isn't even correct mm -hmm. half the time. So it's really not. Still not a good platform. But they're willing to way overpay considering how much shit they're going through still. And the the company changed to the Meta. Uh, to emphasize on the metaverse, they're gonna go harder on gaming and VR and all that shit. So Facebook is still offering lots of money. If you want to just do, if you want to just get paid, you go. They definitely go to Facebook. It's a black hole. I no mean, one I will ever get... hear from you ever again. My brand is a little bit uh, fiery for that, but <laughs> yeah. No, you would be perfect on Facebook. Um, I don't know. I think everybody wants to get away, especially especially Facebook probably. I think people want to get away kind of from the political stuff, at least the edgy stuff. Jesus, how many times has Zuckerberg had to go in front of Congress to talk to a bunch of boomers about, like, is it your fault that Trump was elected or some shit? <laughs> or, or that Russia almost, like, nuked the U.S. or whatever. Like, is this all, this came literally from Karen on Facebook. Is Zuckerberg's fault, you know, I don't know. Yeah, he does want to get away from all that shit, but it is still really huge. And I'm sure you have a giant fan base of, like, 60-year-old grandpas. Yeah. They would really enjoy you on Facebook. Did you ever see my... <laughs> this was like the most... Um... I don't know if I'm the only person that has this. I feel like this has got to be a common fantasy. Where you have a dream that you're like in some high stress situation and somebody challenges you to like the one thing that you're the best at in the world. Like the somebody aliens invade Earth, and in order to win, they challenge you to like a game of like Pac-Man or Tetris, and you just happen to be like one of the best Tetris players ever. And you're like, oh yeah, it's my time to shine. Um, when I was in uh, Georgia, I um, wanted to help canvas for Ossoff and Warnock for the Senate seats, and I was walking around canvassing with a friend, and this old conservative lady comes up to me on the street, and she's like, "Oh, um, what are you guys doing here?" I was like, "Oh, we're canvassing for these two uh, Democratic candidates." And she's like, "Oh, really?" And I was like, "Yeah." And this lady, I'm not joking, this lady whips out her cell phone and she's like, I kind of want to have a debate about these people. Do you care if we do one? And I posted my Facebook and I was like, oh yeah, sure lady, if you really want to. They get addicted to the system and they don't do them. I don't think anybody wants to be addicted to the system. I think people generally want to work and provide for their families, but like some people get left really far behind, like right off the, right out of the gate. I think that's pretty sad. All right. Oh my God, that was a, uh, was a massacre. I can't, dude, you, I, I don't know how you do internet. Just day -day, like politics. Oh, day -day it's mind numbing. It's rotting. Debating people. Fucking who gives a shit to enough to spend hours talking with some other fuck nut about whatever and then getting nowhere and having no one's position changed and no one on the internet thinks any fucking different. It I mean, well, this is a, it's, it's, an, it's like a what microcosm of do? real life politics. It's the same shit that happens in our day to day real life political scene as well, unfortunately. It's also Twitter. Nothing changes. People make threads with 174 tweets and I'll read all of them. And, and if you disagree, you're not going to change your mind at the end ever for anything well 
So I'm at the what's the point part of uh, life now, too, Stephen. Oh, I, I loop back there sometimes. We, I go through my Doomer arcs where I say I'm done with this. It's all a waste of time. So. <laughs> no, no, you stream nine hours a day and five of them are debating. Listen, we, we've gone through a lot of League of Legends. Right, you don't understand, okay? We've gone through a lot of arcs here where I just say we're playing League of Legends for the next six months, and that's all we're doing because fuck politics, okay? It's We've been there before, okay? And I've almost gotten there again, so it happens. Yeah, but StarCraft 2, 1v1. Well, yeah, can well, you can you do it for me and the 50 people in chat for the 50 people in chat? I'll think about it. Okay Don't you ever feel like the soul has just left your your body? No, I like it. I like screaming at people. It's fun I still enjoy it a lot. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. I just play League full-time I always have enjoyed it. I am just really lately I have been enjoying it less. Yeah Do you find you enjoy Man, a I lot of life less? Do you play video games? Or do you do anything for fun anymore that you enjoy? Yeah, no, gaming. I still love to play games. Games are the reason I'm fucking I got into all this dumb bullshit because I still love to play games. And it's also a great escapism. Mm -hmm. Drugs aren't shit compared to video games. People don't understand. Well, I don't know if I'd say that, but I mean, I have experience, and I'm gonna say, gaming way better for escapism and for addiction than fucking drugs. Drugs ain't shit. Because I'm putting 100% fucking video games. That's the real shit. That's the hard shit. Okay. Um. Um. What do you uh, What do you play these days? Um. Valorant. So my mental has not improved at all. Actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, I play first person shooters. I I have my whole fucking life. I have been yelling at people. I have been beefing with other people. I have more beefs than any other fucking person. Maybe lately it's cooled off a little bit, but mm -hmm. Steven, I'm really high up there. You gotta understand. Oh, tell me, man, that must a be rough beef beefing with person. so many people online. Jeez. Okay, tell me about it. I mean, yeah, you have experience, but as yeah. you're saying lately, it's kind of worn off yelling at people and yelling with people. And I do, I still, still, still do really enjoy it sometimes, I guess, but it, I don't know. I don't know, man. Sometimes it could be just it seems kind of pointless at the end. We don't get anywhere. There's no resolution. No one finds any comment. I don't think that there's that is the point in the first place anyway. Mm -hmm. We're all just kind of saying what we want at, at the other person, not to the other person all the time. Mm -hmm. True. And that is part of the enter the entertainment. People have to understand it is at the end of the day mostly enter just entertainment. Do you feel like when you do these debates you're trying to inform people? Sometimes, yeah. Do you feel like that is happening? Yeah, I think so. Do you really? Yeah, I do. You you really do. Yeah, I think the vaccine stuff has probably been the most effective stuff I've done so far, yeah. Uh, I talked to uh, I think two parents. I got one old guy convinced him to take vaccines. I've gotten a lot of emails. I usually judge my effectiveness based on the types of emails that I get, so. I mean, I have a friend who's a super um, in my building. A super? What does that mean? He, he's one of the, he does like stuff around in the building. Oh, like you a know, super? Like, he, he, he gives a shit. Okay. Um, he is unvaccinated. Okay. And I have another pretty good friend from gaming hero new york and is also unvaccinated okay um and i have had what feels like hours days worth of just like you know shooting the shit talking about whatever mm -hmm. um not only has it been generally unsuccessful even if it was in the end it would seem kind of fruitless. I don't even know if it would be me. So if I'm having such a like a difficult time with people who I'm still like friends with and I don't have reservations against for for like being unvaccinated in this case, when especially they get a lot of vitriol from other people, mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like the internet version of these discussions are or even like the real life discussions are help are are doing anything. I know what you I know what you're saying. I think that there's not a lot of good feedback for humans in terms of like how we do online discussions because all the people talking are the most aggressive people that are wait, f are you talking about you're not talking about good text or whatever, are you? Wait, what what do you mean? Anti-vaxxer like, friend? Like Ryan? 
No, like I haven't. Okay. I actually haven't spoken to him, but I still like Ryan. Like I'm not gonna. He seems like a cool I'm guy. Not... He's just an absolute conspiracy nut. But I mean, it seems like a friendly dude. And he he had the music video with um um Washington. Um, oh my God, K. What's it, the guy's name? Fox. Really cool saxophone player. I want to say like Kajami. Wait. That's not his name. But anyway, Wait. um, Kamashi what? Kamashi Washington, saxophone player. Really cool guy. He did. He has. He's in like a music video for like a song. I actually have no idea what the fuck you were talking about. Gotex. That's him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this video. This guy's a six saxophone player. But anyway, this is a totally not relevant. Um, I mean, yeah, dude, I'm, people <laughs> hate you. That's fine. Tons of people fucking hate you. I still like you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, Tons of people fucking hate oh, me. Hold on. What, whatever. Doesn't, what I was saying though is that like whatever. you miss like there's there's still a decent chunk of people that are kind of in the middle that could be moved either direction. You just don't hear them talk about it as much because they don't have the strongest opinions. So I'll have a debate with somebody where their positions aren't really changing at all, and everybody in their chat is calling me a massive you know soy boy simp cuck or whatever. Um, but then I'll get some emails at the end and it'll be like, hey, you know. Um, I watched this and I was kind of on the fence about this, but you know, you've moved me over on this. And like, I think that when I get emails or messages like that, if I only get, even if I only get one, I know there's at least like 10 people for every email, right? That aren't emailing you. So I, I think that that's stuff. I think it works over time. You just have to be, I try not to be super doomer about it. I think I've made a lot of positive impacts in terms of things. Yeah, I've definitely doing. become way more doomer about every portion of Discord. Also because I felt like I've always been pretty good at, at social media personally. Mm -hmm. And I know how to set discourse as if someone is a member of the media and journalist mm -hmm. for a long time. I know really good ways to kind of like make everyone talk about what you want to talk about at all times. Mm -hmm. And the greatest ways to get engagement and like to market stuff and to word things and to title things and to, you know, to create those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I really have become more doomed about like the result of everything that's happening. Uh -huh. Because I really just wish more people would be upfront that it is basically entertaining. When you are making these tweets and these videos, and I would even say the debates and or whatever else, you're doing it just to espouse whatever you're talking about in the most entertaining way possible. There isn't. There isn't I mean, you, ever hold on. I'll fight. Be... Well, okay, I'll fight back against this. I think that that is a style of online conversation that you can partake in. I don't think it has to be that way, though. Everybody does it, and they hide it and masquerade it, and that they're just trying to have whatever a quote-unquote honest debate or discussion or whatever. It's bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. I I don't think it has to be that way. I agree that a lot of people do say that, but I don't think it has to be that way. Like, like if if you it, well, obviously everybody says it, but like, I mean, like if you watch my streams, like there are times where we'll spend like eight hours like reading about like a certain topic, and we'll just like do <laughs> shit like this. Like it happens. We'll do it. We're um, especially related to like the virus and everything, um, and vaccines and shit. Like we spend a lot of time just reading good points on the stream. I think you can have honest conversations where you are trying to arrive at more truthful positions. I do agree that like ninety eight percent of people like fake it, but I just wish we poor, more people were were upfront and honest about it, rather than being so like coy in the way that they present themselves. Even if you're a streamer doing like this watch party shit, I wish people would just say, "Hey, look, it's uh -huh. really easy content. I'm fucking lazy. I'm too lazy to even play video games to do content." Um, watch parties are really fun. Like uh -huh. the concept of watching a, a thing with everybody is actually pretty cool. Uh -huh. And I'd rather just do this watch party and see what happened instead of like, I don't know, making it about like either like a DMCA issue or that the man is trying to come down on you um, or you don't know what to do for content or any of these other excuses, which we back to you just don't feel like doing it. Sure. Yeah, I agree with that. And this type of thinking really i feel like just infects all the internet discourse yeah, related can. thing yeah which is why i can't believe you debate all the fucking time oh, like I, I would go i would go insane because you because then you're really trying to present the position of what you believe in with trying to get an outcome in the end sort of i guess mm -hmm. but that outcome never happens you just gotta believe you know one debate at a time one person at a time Well, you're right. It always works. Everybody, everybody changes. Well, I, lo I love this country. Thanks.
When was the last time I saw you? Uh, at that E3? Or it was E3, yeah. I feel How like long I ago was that? Him intellectually. Fuck, three years now? Damn. Well, really nothing's happened. Yeah, I got, well, yeah, the world has kind of stood still for the past, like, three fucking years, yeah. I really can't fucking believe that we're still in this. I do think things will come back this year. Most of the esports events are mm -hmm. scheduled. They are doing ticketing for most of them. I mean, that shit might get canceled. It really depends on what country it is, I think. When it, when it is. My prediction, I think a few weeks ago, I said I feel like we're going to be done with most coronavirus stuff in like two I'm months. Facing. That's what I felt like. Because it feels like everybody's going to be infected. Like, we're at, I think we're starting to scratch a million cases a day. I think, like, isn't it 5% of the American population right now has an active infection? Um, so, I mean, like, I, it feels like we're, like, we, everybody's going to get it, and we're just, we, we go from there, I guess. I mean, but couldn't there be another variant? <sighs> yeah, but even if there's another variant, like, we're, we've gone through the Omicron shit, so, like, you, you'll have at least some immunity from that. It's not like we can be in lockdowns and everything forever, right? Every time a new variant comes out every single year. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Mm. However... I mean, I don't know though. Like, at what? How dangerous does it have to be for there to be a lockdown and/or remote option for certain things like schooling? Yeah, that's the question. Better. The real question is how many deaths a day do we accept? I don't think anybody has a good answer to that. It might be that a thousand a day is what we accept, but it just seems kind of weird that. The worst flu seasons before are like 60,000 dead. It seems weird that we just kind of accept that now we're losing about 300,000 people a year to a virus. That seems pretty crazy, but I, I mean, maybe. I mean, know? that's but that's kind of awful, though. So I, yeah. it, it, the only thing that's keeping us from shutting down again is that Omicron isn't that strong. I think that's what we think so far, but it's hard to tell because so many people are vaccinated and everything. And so many high risk people are vaccinated. So it might be about as deadly as the other ones, but we just don't see it as much because most of the infections aren't either vaccinated people or younger people that didn't get vaccinated. I don't know if we if we are for sure yet and if it is like more mild. Although I read an article the other day saying it has a harder time replicating in the respiratory tract, which is where a lot of like pneumonia problems are coming from. So I don't know, maybe. If, a, if another strain came along and it was worse, I feel like we'll be in a perpetual like depressive emotional i feel like if there was another variant mm -hmm. and it's somehow back to being bad we're gonna people are gonna start at absolutely breaking down even more than what happened before mm -hmm. and it might be even worse because i don't feel like anyone's learned any lessons from this like overall as a general human population mm -hmm. feels like we have not learned actually absolutely anything from yeah. all of this which is very depressing yeah so if it were to get worse, I don't know how people are going to deal with it. Best case scenario is that other variants will be only as lethal as Omicron, which isn't very at all, and that'll decrease over time. And hopefully we'll, we won't get another thing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. But I'm sure we'll have something else in a year mm -hmm. or two. We'll see, I guess companies don't realize and even most people don't realize is that twitter isn't real life and doesn't matter and that most companies and people actually take twitter and instagram and social media as super serious real fucking life all of the time mm -hmm. so if you actually want change the only way to get change in in the real world is to make a giant social media movement against a company or a person or to get the media involved and to do both. Now, so many people are anti-media and don't like the media, actually for a lot of good reasons, that this has become more difficult. However, the media, and especially mainstream media, still hold a pretty good stranglehold on like the enterprises of, of America and the world, and especially like business type of things. So whatever industry you're in, if you want something to change, you get a really fucking well-sourced article by a well-known journalist to, to cover whatever the problem is. And then you go fucking ham on social media and that company is gonna buckle 99.999% of the time. Mm -hmm. The only exceptions are like, if you want Activision to get rid, of, get rid of Bobby Kotick, that's probably not gonna happen. I know that makes obvious sense to a lot of people, but that is not something that is going to willingly happen anytime soon. 
Um, and you would think that out of how much catastrophe has happened over that company that by now they would have done it. But that that's one of the few things that is not over change. That's not changeable through social media and media combined um, action. However, everything else is. So if you really fucking hate the Valorant format and it is fucking really bad, you just email and tweet at them about how shit it is and get other people to do that same thing. And they will eventually buckle with every other company does. True. Cyberbullying people on the internet is really effective and generally pretty easy. Uh, yeah. It's harder to do against people who understand that it doesn't mean anything like Steven or me. So you can cyber bully us all the time and that happens all the time, but it, nothing matters. One of the most frustrating things about dealing with online hate that I wish people and companies would realize is how short people's memories are. Like my approach to all of it has always been like, I, I, I would hope that you've kind of developed a sixth sense for like, you can tell really early on when some drama is brewing, which way the jerk wave is going. And you know, you're either going to be riding high or you're going to be buried beneath it. If you're going to be buried beneath it, just log off or just bask in it for like two days and it'll be over and don't let it destroy you. So many people will get so caught up in things where they're like, they think their life is over or like companies feel like they've got to start firing all these people. And it's like, bro, if you would just chill for literally like a week, nobody would be talking about this. I see even like major companies fall for this shit sometimes. And it really makes me wonder. Yeah, it's actually, don't, Stephen, don't tell people the secret, okay? Yeah. If you just do and say nothing, people for like, will forget. Yeah, for like three days and then you're done. I remember I was so shocked when Disney knocked off James Gunn for one of those things because Cernovich and shit was story shit. I was <laughs> yes, like, Guardians then, of the Galaxy yeah, no shit, one right? cares about this. Just like, shut the fuck up for like three days and no one's gonna be talking about this. Why would you buckle so quickly? Why would you even show people that they could have that much power? It's so stupid, yeah. And it, because you have an entire industry from both the people on in leftist media and people on the right mm -hmm. that have built entire, f you know, companies off of the culture war and outrage on both sides and outrage at the outrage and mm -hmm. being mad at the other thing that's evolved over mm -hmm. time. Our emotions run so much higher, but for so like much shorter in time, we, we get very, 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 very mad, but then we're over it very, very, very quickly. <laughs> well, so social media has made things way this, social media has really um ruined everything in society it really completely. has caused all the problems <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely true like i made a an early decision to like use twitter as my main platform mm -hmm. because i kind of saw a uh, twitter and reddit have always been the two things that i've used the most because mm -hmm. i kind of saw like they were they were a little bit different than the facebook myspace mm -hmm. model in the way that like you know it's kind of like the town square, especially for Twitter mm -hmm. and Reddit's way more of a communal type of organization type of discussion way. Mm -hmm. And if you if you if you own, you know, the, the, your voice, you can kind of again, like you can set the discourse. You can talk whatever you talk about is what everyone's going to be talking about. Yeah, and that's kind of how, how way yeah. things go. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to manipulate people. Yeah. And it's really easy to get manipulated, I think, if you are if you don't know what the fuck is happening. So because of that, and because Twitter is so real time and social media is predicated on everything being in real time, then everyone gets so wrapped up in everything happening, especially when there are major events happening, um, that no one's able to really process stuff properly. And everyone feels like they have to have a take on fucking everything. You can always shut the fuck up. No, Steven, that's you impossible. All oh, of the time, you, Stephen, why do you tweet some things? Ask me what it is and I'll defend it to the death, okay? I defend no, all my tweets, edgy or not. Give me a, any one and I'll defend it to the death. We can argue for hours about any tweet I've ever fucking fired off. Why though? Why would you defend and argue for, why? Because I, there are some things I feel strongly about. I feel strongly that about a lot I of things. I don't fucking believe you. Then ask I me. Think... Yeah, bring then any any time I tweet something, you're like, I don't think you care that much about this. Then bring it up. Shoot me a tweet, and we'll see. Okay. 
Okay, I will. I mean, I should go back in the past because I've wanted to fucking yell at you all the time. Not for argue against whatever you're talking about, even though I might disagree. It's because I feel like, I feel like you do it on purpose to antagonize. Obviously, I might phrase things a little tweets. bit aggressively, but I stand by the substance of everything I say. Oh, come on. You, you think you're not rage baiting for 90% of your tweets? I'm, it might be rage baiting, but I'm rage baiting with the truth, okay? <laughs> It would be like if I was religious, I could tweet out, God loves all of you, and, um, you know, he, he's going to save as many as he can, but I probably wouldn't tweet that out if I was religious. I'd probably tweet out, you know, <laughs> a lot of you guys are going to hell. <laughs> I saw a lot of people yesterday. They look like sinners to me. I see a lot of people that are deserving of the flames, the wrath of God, you know? That'd be the kind of shut up you're It's the same message, just a little bit more edgy, but I would defend the substance of it. No, Steven, be honest with me, okay? What? I know when I do things, because I do them too. It's entertainment, okay? You're just entertaining people with your rage bait. When you make your takes more outlandish, it's way better than to have any nuance. And that is what no, it sees I, things like we Twitter. No, I fundamentally approach these things in different ways. When I talk about something online, I feel strongly about everything I talk about. I'm not there to just bait for entertainment. It's not like just like a game or it's LOL or whatever for me. I feel very strongly about the things that I tweet about. And I okay, will argue but, to death. But, but me too, but I can amp it up a little bit. If you know what I... Like, you... It's not that I don't feel like you... Obviously, I feel like you believe in what you're saying and the things you are... You are passionate about them. Mm-hmm. But you know how to like all the good hosts and everyone that's really popular in any type of media always kind of ramps up the rhetoric a little bit and whatever they're talking about to the point where it's, you know, you, you are shouting, yeah, the truth. But everyone has some version of that for the most part. Okay. Hey, what are you doing? Hey. Sorry, he threw a spear in my face. Did you die? Nah, <laughs> I fucked him up, obviously. Um. Fucking dubstep. Yeah, more people should just shut up, though. If you want to, if you ever want to bully someone, just. Just go ham. Because most, most people cannot deal with it. But everyone would be better, honestly, if they did what I have been doing, which is just don't use it. Oh. You don't need to make a post about how you're not going to use the thing that you're not going to be using. True. You can I just... do agree those posts are cringe. It's not easy. Um, especially because social media is as addicting as a lot of other things to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But you can just not. Okay. You can. It's really hard. And if you're a content creator, it's almost impossible. Sure. If you're a content creator, you have to, or if you work in journalism or any part of media, you basically have to use social media and things like Twitter because it's part of your job and you need it to survive. True. But if you are any other normal person in society who has a normal job, I don't know why you would use things like this unless it's purely for entertainment purposes. True. Also true. Or maybe information. Even then, I'm not completely sure. It's actually pretty good. If you set up your feed for all just like news sources, it's actually pretty good. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. If you're trying to fucking have discourse on Twitter, if you're trying to fucking argue with people about things, if you're trying to like do stuff that's not just to like post away into the void because you know it's going to be fun, funny as fuck to like make somebody mad or because you, yeah, you really believe in something and you just want to say it, then you are fucking up. Did you follow the um the th you mentioned Thorn? Did you follow the Thorn breakdown recently on Twitter? Oh yeah, yeah, that's what my I am esports thing mentioned. But well, I am it was mentioning. Yeah, um, like if dude, if Thorn fucking disappeared tomorrow, esports would be fine. If I right. fucking disappear, which I have even more, esports will continue on as nothing had ever happened or changed, and it will it will succeed or die. Either way, without, you know. See, I'm definitely more in the doom and gloom. Yeah, I can notice. Of, you're pretty doomer. Yeah. You know? Uh, look, to ha look, how about me and Thorin make up and you and we make up? And all at the same time. 
Wait, why do you and Thorn hate each other? I don't even remember. Do I remember? Oh, Did I know about uh, this? It, dude, like he, we have beef, we have beef for forever. For, for like years, for so many years now. What caused it? What was the start of it? What was the first big beef? Oh God, dude, fucking, I don't even know now. It's oh. been so long and we've had so many ups and downs. I honestly am not sure. Okay. Probably when I, when the, when the, company that I worked for with him at CBS at GameSpot when we got banned by Reddit. <laughs> Wait, was this related to Richard Lewis or did he get banned independently by Reddit? No, he never got banned. Oh the no, it was you. Okay, okay. Because one of you guys were posting links to Reddit and then Reddit like site-wide banned the, the entire- It was actually fucking bullshit. Okay. <laughs> it's actually, the story is actually fucking bullshit. It's yeah, bullshit. okay. I mean, what really happened was I was the first person to work for GameSpot and I created Games, GameSpot Esports over there. Mm -hmm. And then it went really well for a year. And one of the things that I do the most was use Reddit. I was basically the first person in Esports to really like embrace Reddit. Mm -hmm. um, even back in those early MLG days, like I integrated Reddit onto the live stream. And I did things like manipulate Reddit's algorithm um and skirt i've always skirted the line on like how to like use reddit and like what what are the best practices mm -hmm. for reddit. so yeah i posted on reddit and i submitted my articles all the time however i followed the rules which is for every one post for yours you need to make like eight 10 posts, posts or something and i add them shit like yes that, yeah. and i didn't do one to eight but i was like one to six or seven like i was posting a fuck ton every day of all types of shit. Like I was a power redditor. Mm -hmm. Right now, my account has 100,000 karma, which is not a lot at all, mm -hmm. but it's still like decent. I, I made a lot of fucking posts mm -hmm. on, on Reddit. So okay. I abided by the rules and I would do things like integrate Reddit into like the live streams. And I would actually get yelled at for that by Reddit CEO, Alexis Sohanian. Back then he married Serena Williams, by the way. That's who that was. Gotcha. Um, and he was also a quick player and, and he was a gamer. So I kind of knew him a little bit from before. So he would like bust my balls and tell me like not to fuck with shit. Um, but he still like knew everything that I was doing like on Reddit and it was kosher and it was okay. I brought on Thorin and some other people onto CBS to all work together in one team. And I told people what to do. And one of the main rules was you can't, one, you can't tell other people to vote for you. <laughs> oh, somebody! I remember the everybody would have like Skype groups and shit where every time you posted yeah. on Reddit, you would copy paste like the URLs and shit, and everybody would talk like go up over here and all that shit. And I always had to be like, fucking, it, never ever do that. Do not uh -huh. make any groups. Do not tell people to fucking upvote your things. Don't like go tweeting to upvote your shit. Yeah, Just but don't everybody fucking did. do. Oh yeah, or sometimes people would tweet literally directly to um, yeah. fucking Reddit threads and comments and shit. Yeah, yeah. And early on, that would work. Like over time, Reddit's gotten really, really good at its spam detection, mm -hmm. and it can detect um, in a lot of ways on what is a real upvote or not. I mean, that's been that way for years. I mean, way back when, I remember like you had to upvote something, and if you didn't click through to the link and then go back to the page and re-upvote it again, mm -hmm. it wouldn't count as a real upvote. Yeah, because if you're clicking and coming from an external site and then you just upvote and leave, it wouldn't count those. It'll show it on your screen, but it doesn't actually count them as upvotes. Yeah. Now it's actually even more, more advanced. I don't, I don't know what it is lately, but like that's gone now. It definitely can detect if there's like a group of people doing something too quickly. I mean, there are still ways to game Reddit for sure, mm -hmm. but it is it's definitely way more complicated. Harder. And there's yeah, way more traffic too, so it's harder to. Yeah, it was really weird way back in the day. Careers were kind of like made on Reddit, and it's. I think it's a little bit harder now. It's all um, very commercialized, uh, or I say commercialized, but it, it seems like. It's harder to get like organic growth where you have like a new up and comer, or at least it seems that way. And like a Reddit, it's like, oh, this, like for instance, like way back in the day, Sky Williams was built on the League subreddit. You remember this? Yeah, if you posted videos, I'll, even yeah. Dunkey. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so. maybe. Yeah, true, true. Um, I don't know if you ever see that as much anymore because you're like almost not even. It seems like you're heavily discouraged from even posting personal content. So it seems like really hard um, that that kind of stuff ever happens anymore. So, yeah. It depends, like what game you're covering. If you're covering League of Legends, then Reddit is still pretty important. 
Mm -hmm. Even though the League of Legends mods are notoriously one of the absolute worst, just most incompetent modding groups out of all of the fucked up modding shit on Reddit, which would say a lot, right? Considering how many fucking weird shit there is mm -hmm. and the whole con the whole way that moderation works on Reddit. Mm -hmm. The League of Legends people do not know what the fuck they're doing. Sure. However, the subreddit itself is still like one of the problems for... I mean, there's problems and advantages. One of the issues for some games right now is that the subreddits have split into two different subreddits. There's the main subreddit, and there's a lot of the time the esports or competitive subreddit. Mm -hmm. And that is done for a few reasons. Um, you know, the competitive side just wants to run a subreddit. The, the issue is usually it's because the main subreddit doesn't care about esports, and that's usually not good for a competitive. But they, they kind of just want to play, put ca post casual play of the games and random bullshit and then post pro play. I think it's fucking stupid, but the Overwatch and Valorant subreddits are perfectly shown that people don't care about the competitive side too much. Yeah, that's me. I super love games, but I super do not give a fuck about people that talk about esports. God, even when I played StarCraft, I don't give a fuck about esports. It's so boring. I just want to play games. I don't want to watch other people play You're games. You're my favorite pro, though. Thanks. <laughs> Semi pro, but yeah. You should go check out our interview from 10 years ago. <laughs> I gave a lot of crazy interviews 10 years ago. There's one where I'm talking about defending the N-word with fucking uh, Richard Why? Lewis standing in Creffield. I think that, I think that's still on the internet. It's 10 years ago or 10 months ago? Uh, good one. Ten, Richard Lewis, though, 10 years ago. <laughs> just made, just keep it up to date. Wasn't, wasn't mm -hmm. sure. fuck we were talking about um all the things you have any opinions on reddit going public i don't know no i feel like nothing really. will change that much it's already pretty like corporate oh i mean yeah yeah it can't it can't really change too much more mm -hmm. i i don't think it will they look at people over there still understand they can't make it dig that they won't kill the, the website mm -hmm. um and it's already so big that nothing is going to come along to compete against it mm -hmm. i feel like it's at the size where it's like youtube what's the point of building another youtube or another facebook or another reddit if it's just doomed to fail at the beginning i mean maybe you can succeed but at a certain point it's just almost impossible yeah so probably nothing much will will change Um, oh, wait, I'll finish my fucking story. I know you don't oh. give a shit, but oh. fucking we didn't we didn't fucking do it, though. OK, we as the team, oh, 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 because I yelled at everyone mm -hmm. not to fucking manipulate the goddamn rules. And I knew more than anyone not to fuck with the rules or we were going to get banned. And somebody and because we none of us moved to San Francisco, which is where CBS Interactive is headquartered. Mm -hmm. I'm in New York. Travis Gafford is in L.A. Thorin was in the UK and Cyborg Matt was in the UK. Mm -hmm. So none of us lived in San Francisco. One day we found out that the San Francisco office had upvoted a bunch of things and that we were banned for vote manipulation. So it was our bosses. Wow. Our bosses and people that worked on our team did not follow <laughs> Did not follow procedure, which again was do not all upvote from the fucking office. Dumb fuck. It's like, what are you doing? Because it looks really suspicious, and it is. So we got banned, and then I had to go down to Reddit headquarters, which is in New York City, mm -hmm. and I knew the community manager back then, and we fucking had to, we chatted for two hours about like a bunch of different things, about how Reddit was changing, and about like, user generated posting and how like the one to nine rule was actually really fucking stupid as a whole. I did try to explain why having to keep up with that is actually really dumb. Um, and eventually our ban led to the ch led to the change of that rule. Nice. Cute. That's no longer a rule on Reddit because of what happened to us and because I fought for that. So I far. will say if you ever want to engage in vote manipulation like that again, um, surfshark.deal slash destiny uh, three months for free, 83% off. <laughs> Great VPN. Uh, you can emulate servers from anywhere in the world. Upload all the posts you want. Just remember to make different accounts, okay? No, that doesn't work. Yeah. Every account has to be, like, active. Oh, well. You need to have, like, 
accounts that already have karma on it. It already has to have organic upvoting Ooh. in the past. Here's a you question. Can't make me, they can't make new accounts. Game yet, yeah. Do you think that they'll ever ban porn from Reddit? Like all not safe for work stuff? There is so much of it that Careful, I... Careful, because you say that, but what about Tumblr? <laughs> But Tumblr I didn't even know was... I didn't even know Tumblr had non-pornographic content. If I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I actually thought that was a website for like BDSM porn and shit. That's what I thought it was for the longest time. I didn't know that people posted non-porn shit on Tumblr. I will say, okay, I don't know the current relationship between Reddit and Condé Nast, which is the owner. Uh -huh. um, but Yahoo was definitely a much more fucked up position as a company trying to like not be destroyed mm -hmm. and they thought that getting rid of porn on tumblr which is the platform they owned would be better in the long run to try to re-legitimize the platform and to grow it and to remove risk from yahoo as a whole obviously the first part of revitalizing tumblr that was fucking stupid getting rid of all the most popular content but i think it was also a liability thing for yahoo I don't feel like Condé Nast gives a shit, and I think that Reddit is so fucking big that they don't need to buckle. I also feel feel like that they don't need the porn, though. Like, there is so much porn on Reddit, but mm -hmm. the other parts of the site are so big anyway. I don't really know what the if it'll be that big of a blow if they didn't have it. Mm -hmm. But they do pride themselves on having everything. I do think the general um kind of sex positivity stuff that has been more open and like how sex work is talked about more mm -hmm. on the internet in general i think because that has progressed forward a lot more that they are more hesitant to remove stuff if you're gonna have companies like only fans and fan house or whatever become like these massive <laughs> fucking companies off the back of you know sex work then you, this it's is not kind the of... same thing but do you think that Twitch has been hesitant to take a strong stance on the softcore porn that is allowed on Twitch because of that? I was, I'm always curious of that. I kind of wonder. Uh, what, you want the doom and gloom answer or you want me to try to be positive here, Steven, okay? I feel like when I look at the ASMR sections and then the bikini sections, it's essentially like a bunch of softcore porn on Twitch. And I wonder if like it's because of like they don't want to come off as being like sex negative or anti-women or something by banning these sections. I'm so curious. I don't know. Yes. You no, know, that, that is kinda... the, prior, the, pri the primary reason is that they don't want to be anti-woman and because it, they don't want to be anti like sex positivity. You know what I'm really disappointed in? A long time ago, there was a brave fight on Twitch, okay, over the right for women to stream themselves breastfeeding their ch children. Do you remember this? Do you remember the one woman that fought this? And she got it through, and they're allowed to do it, but nobody did it. We didn't get any breastfeeding. What the fuck? I, I, yeah, I, can't I was waiting for a whole meta. meta on that. What the fuck happened? It's because none, not enough of them have kids. Yeah, I guess. All, all, all the top of the women at the that meta don't have any kids. Uh -huh. Well... Well, I mean, you and Melina? Uh, you know, maybe, we'll see. That seems really weird, but probably so not. Nathan, so if Nathan too. <laughs> I feel like that's about as close as you can get to child porn without it actually being child porn, you know? I'd, I'd call that child porn adjacent, maybe. I don't know if people are okay with that or not, but. Super weird, but would be super meta. And you always have to balance that line. Yeah. How, between how fucked up something is and between how many views that'll get you. And I'm thinking views be pretty damn high. Thinking views be pretty high. Definitely pretty fucked up, but views very high. That's that's tough. It's tough. Were you here? You were kind of like offline, so I don't know if you followed it. Did you follow the Coomer Wars on Twitch? Between um, uh, the Great Tribe of Andy Fox versus the Kingdom of Am Amaranth. Did you watch any of this happen? That was, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> what the, dude, I was just like watching. Like, what the fuck is this website? I don't even know, man. I mean, Kaywin's done a fantastic job. Yeah? She, she is... A warrior. She's a worker. She, I, I love Kaywin. I think, like, she, she does the most absurd shit um that i'm it's fucking hilarious 
I fucking love it. Uh, I, I even found something on YouTube that I was going to link to her and I was be like, can you please do this? Because I think it'd be really funny. Mm -hmm. Um, because on, on YouTube, there's a meta too. If you didn't know, it's just talked about less. I don't know why. Yeah, people are constantly tweaking everything when it comes to YouTube shit. Video link, what swear words no, you can have yeah, on. Yeah, but I mean, specifically, like, there's a naked yoga oh, meta. Oh, maybe, sure. I don't specifically, even know. there's a naked yoga meta. And now I've seen a new meta of um, sexy reviews, which I guess is as old as time, but really is coming to the limelight now. Do you remember way, way, way back like in the I'm YouTube days when you could do video replies? <laughs> and there was the meta of like pretty girls replying to every popular video. <laughs> That's fucking great. Fuck. I mean, Did you, you ever that, use YouTube way back then? Out. It was it was way, way, way back. You could do instead of comments, you would do video reply. There'd be reply videos and it'd be I think they'd be linked right beneath or whatever. Yeah, and then there was a, um, it would be like pretty girls would be flooding all of these wearing like high cleavage outfits and shit. Yeah, the reply girls used to be hated. Yeah, but damn, that was a, that was a meta. Well, it's way better to do it on Twitch now, that, that, that method. True. You just react and reply consistently. True. And you do like interactive dating or questions or, I'm liking where, I'm liking where it's all going. I think it's really, really come together. Yeah. For everybody. Yep. I think Twitch actually likes it too. I, I don't know what they think about how just chatting has gone, but I feel like if you're Twitch, you've got to be happy. A out of all of the fucking drama that's happened, out of all the controversy that's gone on with the just chatting section, mm -hmm. I still feel like in the end, you've got to feel like if you work with Twitch, it's been successful. I mean, every harm that Twitch has suffered has been self-inflicted. It's not like they were ever at risk of anything. It's always them deciding how they want to enforce the rules or who they want to ban or whatever. It's not like they've actually faced, or at least I can't think of any huge external pressures that Twitch has actually faced, anywhere similar to like the apocalypse on YouTube or anything. No, but that could happen now. Maybe. But the ads on Twitch are so unsophisticated, I don't even know if the advertisers have any idea at all, so <laughs> who the fuck knows. I mean, Twitch has definitely been saved in that their like sub model was actually kind of innovative at the time when it came out. And now it's standard across a ton of different streaming platforms and general subscription things mm -hmm. like Substack yeah. that they're they're f owning. I don't know. Like, I would still think they make more money and add revenue than the subs. I would think so. I would hope so. Considering how big Twitch is in terms of viewership, they have to be making more money off of ads. Mm -hmm. But they probably still make a pretty good chunk off of subs in total. I feel like I've outpaced Maybe. them intellectually. And, and bits and all that shit. Um, that Twitch as a company still does pretty okay. Mm -hmm. When are you going to start watching stuff? What, like React shit? Yeah. Never. Don't I'm sure me. the DGG or community would love to react with you. Um, no, shut up. What's the best tool to use in this? Is it a hatchet? This is seriously the only way to destroy I'm like kind of serious, though. I think it'd be really entertaining. I am, um, I do sometimes. It just depends on, um... No, none of this politics react to fucking debate bullshit. Like, that's what I do. I'm a politics streamer. Oh, God, I know. Yeah, that's what I do. So how can Your you be... Your brain is never going to come back. You're never My coming back. My brain is fine. No, no. Yeah. No, everyone is internet brain. Okay. Being infected every other, every day. We're never coming back, but politics is, is the worst. I think React content is actually good for mental health. That's the argument that most of these streamers should be making. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that? Because sitting back with your stream Watching a TV show or a movie with everyone getting along is one of the most comfy things you can do, Steven. And you don't have the stress of having to entertain, you know, thousands of people with your own content or having to play a game with a bunch of assholes talking shit to you all the I time. I like playing games, okay? That's what I'm doing right now. Playing games, all right? And I'm enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun right now trying to figure out how to build this thing. So fuck you, slashered. What do you what do you make it? 
making a big old place, okay? I've never played Rust, actually. That's I really should. Yeah, you should. You wouldn't hand you couldn't hack it. Okay. In the uh -huh, in the uh -huh, battle uh -huh, arena. Uh -huh. Wait, did you ever play Fortnite? No. You never like any of the Call of Duty games or anything either, huh? Nope. Do not give a shit. I've played five games for twenty years. Gotcha. Maybe maybe six games. Do you ever play any of the single player games that come out or you don't give a fuck about any of that? Like the last I did when I was a kid. Uh-huh. I played all the Final Fantasies and Zelda. Final Fantasy and Zelda were like my favorite, and Dragon Warrior were my favorite fucking mm -hmm. series, and Mario Kart, all that, all that shit. I played all of them. Okay. Metal Gear Solids. I would fucking rent. I would just rent games from Blockbuster and beat them before I had to bring them back. I never bought games. True. That was the meta back then. But then when I got into online gaming, that's when I I've been addicted ever since. I'm fucking serious when I say. I've probably been more addicted to online gaming than I have been to any other, like, any other, you know, thing. Okay, that's good. Probably not good, looking back at it. I fucking love games. I love, you know, being, making my career and profession be part of something that I enjoy. That was always, like, a goal of mine. Mm -hmm. Um... But definitely considering different things that have happened in my life, which have been not great. Everything is definitely my fault in the end. But games were not... Games were not helpful. I can... I really can escape everything else going on in the world and really focus on a game if I need to. Um, and while that's, a, I think, a skill in some ways, in a lot of ways, it's not the way you should go about stuff. Yeah, the escapism um, is uh, probably not a good road to go down. And I definitely have used games more than I've used like substances in mm -hmm. that way. Okay. Um, it's way easier for me to be more in this world. And the internet, and the, so the internet only Steven. exacerbated that feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I love games, and then I love the fucking internet. And so when they fucking were to figure out how to put the internet and gaming together, it was like over. Where do you live at these days? In Manhattan. Okay. In the city. I mean, I wow. do okay. Sure. I do okay. I was in Brooklyn for a while. I was in Manhattan, then I went to Brooklyn, then back back here. Um, I mean, I love New York, man. Mm -hmm. I've had so many different companies try to make me move to San Francisco, ESPN, and Bristol, Connecticut, which was a big no, I'm okay. Toronto. And they're all cool cities, but, you know, something about New York, man, other than when it's freezing right now. I'm, I don't love it right now. Sure. Oof. I've been uh, in Boston during some colder times, and it gets fucking cold up there. I mean, Miami is a pretty good choice, man, if you want to be warm. True. All the time. Yep. It is. It is indeed Florida. <clears throat> Hold on. I'll be back. You can talk to my chat, okay? Be nice to them, though. No, they don't care about me. I don't care about them. So I think you're all really nice out there. Gotta be honest, I have not been reading chat at all the entire time, so I don't know if you've been mean to me or not. I'm assuming probably, but I don't know. That's also a good... If you want any to learn any lessons from our little chat today, you want to have good mental health, don't read anything on the internet as revolving around you. Most of the time, 99% of it is not going to be a good faith critique or actually help you with whatever dumb thing you may have said. Steven says dumb shit all of the time. All the time. Um, and everybody yelling at him is not gonna make him as speaking I before like change his mind or change. ever um but he doesn't care about that anyway but if you like said or did something that you thought was fucked up and wrong and you feel bad about it you don't need to read any of the people telling you or talking to you about this thing because none of them are going to be any help at all for you So just don't read anything. Just don't don't use the Internet. In all honesty, just get the fuck offline all the time forever. The best 
option you could have of freeing your mind is to never use the internet again. Stop watching Steven. Stop watching everybody on Twitch. No more Twitch. No more YouTube. No more Twitter. No more internet. Internet. Internet off. Video game online also really bad for you coming from experience. Not good. You're just going to get mad all the time. You're going to be in ELO hell forever. You're never going to rank up to what you want to ever. You're never going to get that e-girl that you want from their rank up at the same time. Um, all those friends you made online through those games. Yeah, maybe one or two of them you'll meet. Most of them you will never talk to again. Most of the time. Is, are you bullying people in my chat? No, I'm giving you life advice. I'm telling everyone to just get off the internet. Oh. Like, for your mental health, just stop everything. Okay, Mr. Doomer. No more, no more posts. No more, no more reading of posts or consuming of content. No more online gaming. You'll be all good. Can't wait to come back soon. Yeah? Why are you planning on coming yeah. back? Pretty soon. No, why? If it's so horrible. Oh, no, I am also playing for entertainment. See, haven't you learned a fucking lesson okay. throughout this entire stream, Steven? My bad. I am definitely doom or gloom, but I am not. Stop stuffing your fat fucking all the way. No. You know, I'm not lost. Okay. Okay. I got you. I still love games and I still love esports. I mean, part of the reason I I did really stop tweeting for a bunch of different reasons. Some of it's personal that I'm not going to talk about. Uh -huh. uh, but some of it has also been like professional to I got really annoyed at Twitter at things that were happening on Twitter specifically, and I felt like, okay, just fuck this a little bit. Good choice, good choice. Um, for a lot of things we talked about. Some other people on Twitter are kind of producing similar content to what I was doing, mm -hmm. and I don't think that they're doing a great job at it, but people are enjoying it anyway, so I felt like, okay, it's fine. Damn, shit talk. Who sucks that's trying to do your job? <laughs> He's fucking losing. Honestly, nobody can. Nobody has done a good job of replacing. They all me. suck. Okay, gotcha. They they all do suck. But there are a few in particular that I think do. I feel like they're. I don't think against them as people. Mm -hmm. But I'm you not think huge fans people. of the you way think that they are. Trash. Be honest. Not not huge fan. Mm -hmm. Um. And the other one was esports. I wasn't loving. You know, this whole online COVID era has been kind of shit. And Val I've actually really like Valor in esports. Like, I really like that's been the only thing keeping me interested this past year. While I've been working, I've been trying to read up more on the metaverse and Web3 and NFT and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And then I've been keeping along with uh, Valor and some kind of strike. Like, my top five mo most watched channels were all Valor and Counter Strike related this year. Okay. Um, but besides that, I've been kind of annoyed just at everything. COVID has made, you know, the, in the industry kind of be all fucked up in like these online events don't really mean as much a lot of them were played online and not real land or there's no crowd it's not real land tournament with all these asterisks around the games themselves um and i feel like that esports has not done a really good job of uh kind of keeping it relevant it's really been overtaken by like twitch culture and mate and normal streaming and then things like NFTs have really taken over the discourse in like other ways. So esports has not really been not been doing it for me. I've been kind of annoyed, and I feel like, what are you guys fucking doing? Come on. Yeah, it really feels like streaming culture is to. But then again, I'm super outside of these communities. Maybe that's not the case. I shouldn't say that. I guess. I mean, streaming culture for a very long time, what dictated the meta was what the most popular game was on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And I would say up until really this last year, it has, it has been all esports game. Like StarCraft started Twitch, StarCraft and Street Fighter were the things that Twitch took off. League of Legends fucking took, uh, League of Legends and Counter-Strike kept, you know, Twitch going mm -hmm. to a new era. So did Dota 2 as well. Um, then Counter-Strike Go came out. Then PUBG came out, then Fortnite came out, which are all competitive first person shooters. Uh -huh. And really up until like 2020, which is when I think Just Chatting, when the fuck did Just Chatting launch? I would argue that Just Chatting was, um, Ice Poseidon kind of started that. 
I don't know if they had the just chatting section, but that type of content. IRL, okay, yeah, yeah IRL, IRL yeah. was getting big, mm -hmm. and it was definitely like a new movement, but the meta was still dictated by the most popular game. So if you're Ninja and you're playing Fortnite, you are now a multimillionaire. Sure. If you're Nick Mertz or if you're Tim the Tatman and you've been playing Call of Duty, you're now a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. Because you have been, the games that you have always been playing are now the biggest games in the world. Yeah, that was always my complaint when it came to, um, yeah, but like my skill set from RTS never really transferred over to games like FPS players did for Battle Royales. It was really frustrating. Yeah, like if you were if you were an FPS player for all of the years that Twitch was growing as a company when it was competing against owned and all that shit, mm -hmm. you got kind of fucked. Yeah. Like Counter Strike Go was either trash Horrible or not even account. out yet, mm -hmm. and there were no BRs. And Call of Duty was just a console thing. If you didn't play like Halo or Call of Duty mm -hmm. for a lot of years, you were screwed because the main games were League of Legends, Dota, and StarCraft II. Mm -hmm. Those were the fucking three games, the biggest esports in the world. It was not first person shooters. Mm -hmm. So all of the old school FPS guys have really been able to eat the last few years. Now that Call of Duty released a BR, all the old COD guys can now just farm views playing BR. Yeah, although the Call of Duty Battle Royals don't seem to have as much longevity. They were really fun when they were out, but... Well, because Activision does a great job of just fucking everything up. Yeah. Just fantastic. They cannot seem to do a real thing. Also, the Call of Duty has a problem that because there's a new one released every year, they have a new, a different developer working on each of the fucking different Battle Royales. It's so dumb. The way that they, like, do everything is really stupid, but mm -hmm. I know, understand it because they have a... They, they need to have a yearly game to make all the money. And because they have yearly games, and then, then they need to have different developers. And if you have different developers, and you have different games, and you can't merge the games and the game modes and all that shit. And that's what causes all these problems. Yeah. So they are, like, kind of fucked in a lot of ways. But all the other people, like, if you played Counter-Strike for a long time, now you're eating. You know, because Val was fucking huge, and a bunch of the old Counter-Strike guys are fucking huge in Valorant. So a lot of the time, the Twitch meta was dictated by the games. Only very recently is just chatting uh, webcam stuff now like the meta. Mm -hmm. Webcam is definitely taking over video games. So you can do variety and you could just talk on Twitch or in general, you could just talk and that could be your career way easier than having to play games now. Do you, I don't know anything about this, but I see a few people asking, do you know anything about the TSM Reginald accusations? Oh, yeah, he's always been known to be a fucking asshole. Is that just... Uh, so it came out, a story came out of Aya Cecilia. Um, she reported on the riot sexual harassment uh -huh. original report. She's the one that broke that story. So she broke the story today for Wired saying that Reginald, from many sources, um, was just a straight up douchebag to a lot of people. Yelled at people, screamed at people, yelled at profanities at players and staff after losses and... Uh -huh. They have reports. I mean, there was that video, that old video of him yelling at Dyrus and berating Dyrus on stream. Why did you tell us to shut up? You're so loud. Okay. This is like everyone's area. Why don't you shut up? You're fucking rude as fuck, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm talking to Dan and Carol. Why the fuck are you so rude? A vital decision. <laughs> Why are you being so fucking rude? I'm playing a game, dude. Leave okay, me alone. Okay, why the fuck are you being so rude then? Leave that me alone. That is not just about you being rude. Alright, I'm sorry for being rude then. Stop being a little fucking brat. You're still fucking going Stop on about that. Stop being a little fucking brat. I said fucking sorry! Fuck you the desk one time. I said sorry! I'm How hard, hard is it to fucking accept sorry? You're a little fucking brat. I don't need to fucking deal with this shit. I don't need to deal with it either. Get the fuck out of here. Play a game. Okay, and we're not even talking to you. Why are you being a little bitch about it? You're a little fucking rager, dude. You're like, who the fuck do you think you are? Whatever, dude. What do you mean, whatever? Whatever. No, what do you mean, whatever? I'm playing a game. Okay, you're playing a game. You can tell us to quiet down. Why are you being so fucking rude? Because I'm playing solo queue. Okay, because so, it's solo queue. And I said sorry, and you think it's because no, after you say me. sorry, you can constantly fucking no, rant on me? That. You, you always do that. It's the way you go You it. always do that. Do what? And yes, it's it's bad of me to fucking rage from solo queue. But every I time I say what? sorry, you always give me extra no, shit for it. All the fucking no, time. No, your tone of saying sorry. Is your... It's the way you work. It's the it's your tone. It's so fucking rude after you say sorry. You don't even mean it based on your tone. 
And you think banging the desk is gonna help? No, it Everyone doesn't. Everyone around me gets fucking annoyed when you do that shit. Well, I get annoyed about a lot of shit. Then leave! Get out of here if you're fucking annoyed! Don't start yelling at people and banging desks. Don't fucking rage like that. No one wants to be around people like that, dude. You constantly fucking harp on people all the fucking yeah, time. Yeah, because guys You do it especially, you do it to fucking me. I'm stressed out, I'm training solo queue so I can warm up for a scrim so I can fucking shit on okay, C9 so you're scrims. Be, so you're gonna be rude. No. No, I argue it's special because you argue with me when I'm right. When do you ever contribute besides just sit there and Because work? every time I fucking contribute, nothing gets solved. Because you don't fucking contribute. I, because I do contribute. Yeah, we don't contribute. You're so positively. fucking stubborn, no, dude. No, you don't contribute positively. It's not productive. Positively. It's not productive. Productively. How is it productive? Tell me How about it. Productive? it. How is any of this productive? How is it constantly fucking harping productive? It's productive how because when you're not changing your How when you fucking go on a special on shit? Because it's productive. Why do you argue when you're wrong? Why do you got- why do you say that, oh, we can all contribute when you two are arguing, when we contr- when we say something or two, you guys constantly go on in the same thing, you don't even take it into consideration. consideration you today. barely do. I do, I just tell you that you're wrong. You try to contribute when you're wrong. And I tell you that, and you still can argue anyways. Just like right now, you're saying that you said sorry, but your sorry doesn't mean shit. That's too bad. And you're also bringing things that are relevant to this. For like 10 minutes long, for a long time. Oh, I think I remember that, yeah. There was like video of like him talking shit to double lift for... Was it anything like really egregious? Like any like har sexual harassment like type stuff or whatever? Or was no, it, it wasn't slurs. It's more just like jet normal bullying. Um, and I feel like also Dyrus at the time was going through stuff too. And it was like known that like he, you know, was going through like some mental health stuff at that time during TSM. Mm -hmm. And that I feel like that also added on to it. Cause I do remember him just being a dick. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, it's just like the reports of him being an asshole. And it's like, yeah, Reginald's a fucking asshole. Reginald's always been an asshole. True. Now it's just a, now it's just being a documented asshole. I feel like it is easier, a little bit easier now. A lot of people have left that organization, like Lena, recently Myth left, um, Double Lift, you know, is no longer there. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have a lot of the old guard, like Dyrus hasn't been there for a very long time. He, he doesn't have a, a lot of the old guard that used to like be his protectors over there i think of, of shitty things or at least like understood how he was so they're a little bit more tolerant of him yeah so now that they're gone and you know he doesn't have the best likable reputation it, it i think it's much easier for the story to come out now riot's investigating i mean who knows what they're gonna do mm -hmm. probably be more lenient towards him than the players because he is an owner, of yeah. course. You don't know Regina at all? Me? Personally? No. I might have seen no. it once or twice, but no. I don't think we've ever talked before. A fucking dubstep. Okay, well, anything else? I gotta go back to my team soon. I've kind of abandoned them, so... No, oh, no, you should, you should go do that. Let me know when you play Val. I've had fun. This has been good. I haven't talked to anybody in a little while. Yeah. Well, hey, be careful. Don't die. You know, human interaction is actually a good thing. Yeah, generally, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Not in real life, of course. Just, just online. All right. Well, hey, have fun. Be careful. Stay safe. 